Coming soon in 2019, Blizzard is proud to present World of Warcraft on mobile! A whole new lineup of amazing official Warcraft titles on your portable handheld device. Because hey, you all have phones, don't you? Are you the kind of idiot that likes pet battles? Well now you can take your weird gameplay preferences out of your home and into every corner of your world with World of Warcraft Battle Pet Go! Oh. Edgar. And help your friends along the way. Oh, Taliesin, I need more help gathering battle pet resources. Sure thing, Evertel. Also in 2019, create a vast and sprawling new capital for everyone's favorite homeless pointy-eared race in World of Warcraft, Night Elf City Builder. Plan and organize your town, but watch out, no one accidentally burns it down. Also in 2019, help the young King of Storm and negotiate his biggest challenge yet on the battlefield of love in World of Warcraft and win Daddy Dating Simulator. Only you can decide if the men in the Boy King's life are enemy, ally, or something more. This must be 18 or over. We know you'll love our new collection of mobile WoW experiences, so much so you won't even mind when we tell you we're cutting a raid tier from BFA, and we look forward to seeing you and your credit card soon. Knowledge is power. Hello Internet, and welcome back to another weekly reset. Talies and Evertel's Wondrous Wisdom Show, and this week we are talking new war mode bonuses, the Gamer Choice Awards. We're probably going to spend about half an hour just sitting and looking at the meat wagon mount, and we ask the question which may well define the short-term future of World of Warcraft. If you are one of the not inconsiderable amounts of people who has let their subscription lapse since the start of BFA, is patch 8.1 worth coming back for? What are the pros and what are the cons of Tides of Vengeance? Now this is a question that we will be asking and attempting to answer throughout this entire episode, even as we bring you all of the latest updates and data mining that is still nudging its way through the soil even at this very late stage. But first, the real reason any of you are here, I know it, Hippo Watch. How is Taliesin's progress towards his first ever, best ever, possibly only ever vicious PvP mount going? Well Hippo fans, you may remember the last episode we were stuck at a slightly worrying 56%. But I told you I had a good feeling about the next week, and yes, the very evening that the last weekly reset went live, I just totally ruled an evening of threes, and progress now stands at a tantalizing 78%. So yeah, there's still a long way to go, but that beautiful, almost perfectly round hippo boy is absolutely in sight now, standing in the finish line, encouraging me, looking just a little bit closer than it actually is, because he's so outrageously large, and I just love him, I need him. But like I say, we're going to try and make every segment in the show today relate back to the question, is Tides of Vengeance worth coming back for? And I'm afraid on a pros and cons scale, this has to rate as a total, unequivocal 24 carat con. Because okay, season 1 won't be ending when 8.1 first launches. I technically have until January to fill my hippo bar and get that mount, but it's not quite that simple, is it? Because when the 11th of December rolls around, among the day one updates will be class balance changes and tuning. Good news if you're a prop warrior or a shadow priest, or to a lesser extent shaman, the changes those classes are getting in Tides of Vengeance don't really add up to the reworks we may have been hoping for, but they should go at least some way towards making them more competitive, or at the very least not complete laughing stocks. So that's all great. No, the reason this is a con is because among those changes will be discipline priest tweaks, which aren't a huge nerf, but are going to totally hamstring my usual arena tactic of just constantly spamming shields on myself so no one can hurt me until everyone else is dead and I've won. Which means I either need to get that hippo in the next week, or I'm going to need a new arena tactic, and I'm not really clever enough to think of a new arena tactic, so the pressure is really on now. And in the last few days, we think we might have got a glimpse of another PvP change that looks likely to find its way into the game next week. Extra bonuses for players that have war mode enabled, or specifically outnumbered players players that have war mode enabled. Okay, so you know war mode, right? That button on the side of your talent bar that you definitely have enabled if you're Horde, and probably don't have enabled if you're Alliance, and which flags you for world PvP, and that, supposedly, to make up for the time that you might otherwise spend fighting other players, or running back to your corpse, or basically just hiding every time you see a member of the opposite faction, awards those brave enough to tick it with an extra 10% rewards from quests and world quests. Right, well, obviously that 10% reward is set to remain for 8.1, but 
will actually rise higher for war mode players whose faction is currently outnumbered on the server. Or at least, that's how it's appearing on the PTR right now. When Wowhead reported this, the number was set at 30%, three times the reward for being flagged for PvP. When we tested it a bit later, the number stood at 15%, which could just be Blizzard tweaking the numbers, or perhaps raises the possibility that the rewards scale, depending on just how outnumbered your faction is at that moment, which maybe makes things more interesting. But we just don't know. Now, the elephant in the room here, of course, is that when we say outnumbered faction, in 90% of cases, what we really mean is alliance. Since apparently war mode is a much more popular pastime for horde players than anyone on the blue side, which has apparently meant that most players are seeing huge imbalance between factions when it comes to PvP, which is apparently why war mode is seen as a failure by a large part of the community, which sounds fair enough, but I'm saying apparently here because if I'm going to talk about my own experiences, then frankly, war mode is one of my favourite features of not just this expansion, but any expansion, and I genuinely love it. I enabled it on all 14 of my characters on day one of BFA, and it has stayed on ever since. I've never even thought about turning it off. My experiences have been pretty consistent, whether I've been playing as Horde or Alliance, which might well surprise you, but then remember, I play on Argent Dawn EU, which is a roleplay server, and RP servers have slightly different rules when it comes to war mode, in that I, only get phased with other people from Argent Dawn, unlike non-RP servers which will phase players from anywhere. A feature of my server that you'd expect would make the numbers even harder to balance, but somehow it just works really well. So I count war mode as a massive success, but what about those players that hate it, either because their experiences of it have been massively imbalanced gankfests, or just because they hate the idea of world PvP on principle, which is perfectly fine too. Is this change enough to change their mind? Will Alliance players who resolutely keep war mode off be tempted into it by that increase in rewards? Well, it seems unlikely, doesn't it? I kind of feel like if this is a problem that Blizzard are serious about fixing, that it's going to take something a bit more imaginative. And it's important to point out too that this is just something that popped up on the PTR. Blizzard haven't officially said anything about it at the time of writing, and although it would be wrong for us not to report it, it's clearly not something which is actually ready or final or guaranteed to be a part of 8.1 in any form. So we can't call it a pro or a con yet, so I'm just going to stop talking about it and get to the things that we definitely know are coming. Tides of Vengeance, the pros and cons. Evertel, why should I come back for Tides of Vengeance? Now, obviously, Taliesin should really be hosting this bit because he is the proper Blizzard chill man, but allow me to present to you some of the things we really like about Tides of Vengeance and what we would consider to be firmly in our pro column for reasons that you might want to come back in 8.1. And we'll start with the little things like rewards and vendors, because vendors are going to be everywhere in 8.1, giving you somewhere to spend different currencies from different vendors on different cool things things. So if you're doing island expeditions, save up your doubloons for reputation tokens, if you're the kind of boring person who spends their doubloons on rep tokens, or pirate hats if you're the kind of fabulous person who'd rather spend their doubloons on the important things. There's a recolor of the Reigns of Poseidus mount you can buy for underwater fun times, as well as battle pets and toys, including the Cranky Crab, which is a mount for your battle pets. Don't like island expeditions? That's actually pretty fair to be honest. There's another vendor who deals in service medals, which you can save up to buy, well, pets and toys, but also some new heirloom gear. And yeah, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, shit, when I said I wanted vendors in the game so I could save up for stuff rather than relying on RNG, I kind of meant for meaningful progression gear rather than pets and mounts. And I hear you. It's always nice to have new pets and mounts in the game. And look, we wouldn't be playing if we didn't like collecting stuff, really, would we? That is why I count them. And the new armor sets. And the new Paragon reputation rewards. Like this Daughter of the Sea music box toy. Yeah, we're gonna listen to it right now. As pros. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm a collect that shit and I am going to love it. But when we asked for vendors, what we really wanted was 
as right armor vendors, right? Especially if we are the kind of player that doesn't get most of our high-end gear from raids. So the fact that there is indeed an Azerite vendor arriving in 8.1 has got to be a pro, right? Not only can you save up currency to buy random Azerite caches for a certain gear slot, but you can put it in the hard graft and buy specific individual gear pieces too. So everything we've ever asked for, here's an editor's choice award, GG Blizz, you nailed it again. Not quite. This is one of those ones where we are calling it a pro because it is clearly an improvement on the current system, as well as being something that literally everyone asked for. But we are making it a very provisional pro because we simply haven't seen it working in practice on the PTR. We don't know how long it's going to take to save for anything, so we don't know how efficient a system it's going to be, and therefore how happy people are going to be with it. But provisional or not, a pro is a pro, and hey, it's something that doesn't exist at all in game right now after all. And while we are on Azrite armor, and I know Tally has some things he wants to say about this in his section in a minute, but yeah, the new traits are generally an improvement on the old retired ones, and having that fifth ring with its gamillion trait choices is going to mean everyone has a lot more options and has that feeling of new Azerite armor disappointment that we've all gotten used to much less in 8.1. That's a pro. And the absolute highest level you're going to need on your Heart of Azeroth is 48. That's what you need to unlock the shoulders that Mechatork drops on Mythic all the way to the middle section. Literally everything else in the game is lower than that. Oh, and just a little side note, but if you get a piece of Mythic gear that Warforges, then it could go up to item level 420, which is sure to result in a whole ton of dank memes on Reddit. I don't know, maybe something like, I think it's about time we all got our talent baked in, or something. And I'm looking forward to that, so it's a pro, okay? But what about content? Don't hate me, but I'm totally putting the new Darkshore Warfront in here as a pro. It's noticeably more fun, meaningful, and varied than the Arathi prototype, as well as having lots of more interesting story attached to it. It's doubling the amount of Warfronts in the rotation and creating a cycle of different scenarios, opening at different times, which is clearly how they're intended to be. As well as that, there's the fact that there are extra world quests to do on Darkshore if your faction controls the zone. Everything about it just feels better in Tides of Vengeance, and more like a proper part of the game. The new war campaigns I want to make a really big pro because, well, they're really good. Good. Especially the Alliance story, as players nail down their preparations for the imminent assault of Zandalar. But again, we're gonna have to make it a provisional one, because as good as this stuff definitely is, we still don't know how it's gonna be separated out. And if Blizz suddenly decide to go all Broken Shore on us, then, well, it's going to be as shit as the Broken Shore, isn't it? I'm joking, this couldn't be as shit as the Broken Shore if it tried, because the missions are actually fun. But obviously, the more we can get of this at once, the better. The new heritage armor sets for dwarves and blood elves are fun. The Saurfang storyline is great. There's a ton of good story content in this new patch, which is all big pros in my book. And then of course, there's the piece de la resistance, the new raid. Now look, I'm going to level with you here. I haven't played any of the battle for Dazara lore, okay? Like, people have really good things to say about it, and that makes me really excited because raiding is one of the best things, and yes, an especially fun new raid, especially when it's one taking risks and changing things up like this one, is an especially big pro. And of course, there's the new multi core optimization that will go live at some point too, which is one of those under the hood changes that really isn't as boring as it sounds, as it should result in a noticeable performance boost for most players. More FPS? That's a pro, my friend. You can find proper details on all these new features in various Wowhead articles that we will link below. Okay, so my prop warrior is totally playable. The raid is a peach. I can buy my Azerite off of a vendor. I'm actually interested in the warfront, and I've got a Daughter of the Sea music box. Yeah, we're going to listen to it. But what about the cons? Why shouldn't you come back for 8.1? Well, let's start with island expeditions. There are two new islands in 8.1 and they are fine. They're island expeditions, you know. They are definitely 100% island expeditions. And if you like island expeditions, and yes, angry comment person, you may not want to hear this, but I promise you there are a fair few people who do, then yeah, awesome, happy days. If you're one of those people who don't like island expeditions though, it's unlikely that Havenswood or Jorindel are going to change your mind. I mean, they look great, obviously, but the vaunted new features like the Azerite Extractor just don't really add anything new to the gameplay. And that's a shame. This could have been a cool tower defense thing 
thing or resource nodes that you capture like in battlegrounds but instead it's just a machine that you click and then after about a minute it stops and you have to click it again and frankly you're not going to bother with it because you're going to be off hunting elites for sweet sweet loots so at the moment it's a bit of a missed opportunity even if i am happy for the change of scenery for my alt leveling another con has to be the fact that the new kultiran human and zandalari troll allied races won't be available until after the battle for Dazara law raid i've got a feeling they won't be playable at all in fact until 815 and that seems silly to me both races are quite literally following the players into war already in the story right now so it makes no narrative or gameplay sense to hold off making them playable so blizz do us a solid yeah Unlock them now. Give me my cool Tyran bears and my druids. Another thing I have to put in the cons section here is professions. They are basically still useless. Nothing coming in 8.1 makes them any less useless. I'm basically doomed to carry 500 Sanguacell in my bags until the end of the expansion. And when the new expansion starts, I'll transfer those Sanguacell into my bank, where every now and then I'll notice them and think, you know, I should really just trash or vendor that Sanguacell. I'm clearly never going to need it. And a little voice in my head will go, no, Taliesin, you need to hang on to that Sanguacell. You never know when you might need it. And basically, it will just sit there forever being a mild annoyance to me until I die or WoW dies or the sun explodes, whatever happens first. The biggest con of 8.1 though, the thing that I'm most concerned about and the biggest barrier I think to people coming back to the game is Azerite armor. Now, don't get me wrong, okay, because as Evertel outlined, the changes that Azerite is getting in Tides of Vengeance are all obvious and near objective improvements. It is getting better, but I don't think Blizzard are really solving the core problems that people have with it. So yeah, the traits are generally better, more interesting and more balanced than they were, but there's still nothing as exciting as a Legion legendary effect or even really a four piece tier set bonus. And that is a genuine shame. We really need some fireworks in these traits right now. We need something to get excited about and the problem is that even if a trait is quite exciting it's very easy to miss in amongst everything else because here's the other thing there's just too much going on in azurite armor it's too complicated still with too many variables too many traits that you can't really tell apart still which is why it's so hard to get excited about because when you get a new piece of azurite armor it feels like it's got a lot of random traits on it even though it doesn't and because it feels random it doesn't have the same feel good factor as when you get another type of gear that is clearly great i mean look at the Reorigination Array in Uldia. That was a cool trait. Interesting, raid specific, insanely powerful, actually just the kind of trait you'd want to aim for as a player but it got lost in all the noise, drowned in all the hundreds of other traits and options. And it's that sense of meaningful top level reward, which I think is most players single biggest problem with the game right now. I'm personally not an especially reward based player, so it probably doesn't impact my enjoyment as much as it does many others. But I will say that I've never been as excited to get even my BIS Azerite piece as I was to complete my two or four set. And that's a problem. It's a problem that I don't think 8.1 solves, and it might be a problem that stops you coming back. But having said all of that, I genuinely think there's an awful lot that's very good about Tides of Vengeance. I was excited when it was announced, and having played as much as I can of it already on the PTR, I'm pretty confident that it's overall a very good patch, at least comparable with 7.1, and, well, obviously better than 6.1, but that's a bit unfair. It's like saying it's better than a tapeworm, but you get my point. And look, don't take my word for it. If you want official proof that BFA is great, look no further than the Gamer Choice Awards, where BFA is up for two prizes, fan favorite multiplayer game and fan favorite MMO. Yeah, I know, I know, but just wait for it, okay? And obviously, if you're up for a couple of awards in anything, you're going to mention that, aren't you? So obviously, Blizz put out a blue post, which was actually really nice, I thought. We just wanted to take some time out to thank our community for nominating us and continuing to support World of Warcraft now for more than 14 years. We also want to congratulate the rest of the nominees and say that we feel very humbled to be in a category with so many amazing games created by talented teams across the world, which is about as classy a response as you can make really, it's hardly giving it the whole Bertie big bollocks, it's not even asking you to vote for WoW. And Blizzard's humble attitude towards the awards was definitely appreciated on the forums, where players were happy to take up the invitation and vote for one of their favourite games, whether that be WoW or something else, because let's face it, whether we are enjoying BFA or not, if there's one thing all of us have in common. It's a basic love of WoW and a shared desire for it to be the- No, it was a shit show, obviously. LOL no. This game could literally be the only MMO in the universe and I'd never vote for it. But now WoW deserves an award for being a letdown and a massive failure. I'm going to make 10 accounts and vote for everything except WoW because F you, that's why. Okay, so that 
that's predictable and funny and all totally fair. That's Bance and I insist on Bance, GG. What's really noticeable about some of the reactions to this forum post though is how seriously some people in this community get about every single tiny facet of their anger at Blizz right now. Like, as an example, do you remember a couple of weeks ago when a single picture of Diablo Immortal being an editor's choice on the Google Play Store was enough to send the forums into meltdown and for actual real-life content creators to make whole videos about how Blizzard was desperately buying friendly coverage because evil corporate etc etc and all of those people pretending that they'd never seen the editor's choice section of the Google Store which is where every major new game gets highlighted especially ones that are going to make Google a whole ton of money because despite how people insisted on calling it an editor's choice award it isn't an award at all it's the equivalent of the Play Store's front window where they put shit that they want to sell and how I can guarantee now that I've said this there are going to be people in the comments angrier at me for pointing out that someone lied to them about it being an award than they are at the person who actually lied to them in the first place. Yeah, it reminds me just a little bit of that. This idea that Blizzard simply must have paid to be included in the fan favourite MMORPG nominations in some bullshit awards. Because of course, why would anyone include the objectively most popular MMO in the world in that category unless they were getting bribed, right? Like, come on, be fair here. If your category is called fan favourite MMO and you don't include the MMO with the most subscribers, then you're kind of doing your nominations wrong, regardless of the quality of the game. And hey, if you actually do want a serious conversation about money in the gaming industry, well actually, we know a thing or two about that because we, Taliesin and Evertel, have been offered huge amounts of sponsorship money to play and make videos about two of the games on that list in the last year. But WoW isn't one of them, okay? I guess what I'm saying is this. There are plenty of legitimate criticisms that you can aim at BFA and at Blizzard. Fair, potentially useful criticism without having to make shit up. The total misrepresentation of the Editor's Choice Award? That's making shit up. Thinking that WoW bribed themselves into some no-name awards that are based entirely on popularity? That's making shit up. Pretending that the BFA free game time promotion was a unique and desperate move when it has happened every other expansion? That and a whole lot else is making shit up. It's tiring and it's boring and it's distracting from the real issues and then we wonder why the real issues get lost in the noise. It's not the fault of made up shit like this, but made up shit like this doesn't help. So let's focus on what's important please. Playable Tuscars and a proper bard class. This is the stuff we should be making noise about and you know it. That actually took quite a long time to record uh, Evertel's bits because um, Evertel's phone was near her all the way through and it kept buzzing and I was getting really annoyed I was like why does your phone keep buzzing like do you have another husband somewhere that mm -hmm. keeps like going it's Sunday where mm -hmm. are you but no uh, why was your phone buzzing all the way through um it was the secret finding discord I have alerts on for when uh Aonax is up and the like mysterious camel figurine I just want my mouth okay, okay? I, I don't understand discord I, I don't really use it apart from to talk to <laughs> other <laughs> other youtubers and stuff sometimes because that's how they like to do it but so so like but you are in love with the secrets finding discord now. it's amazing it's so cool well specifically like the rare mount um, like mobilizing bit and it were it's so okay if you haven't used discord, Wow, I feel so old right now. <laughs> yeah. Let me explain to you kids how That's to use it, yeah, Discord, yeah? yeah? <laughs> we'll, do a, we'll do a guide. We'll yeah. do a Discord guide and everyone will be like, at last, someone is explaining I mean, it. I never even knew what it was. Know, is I it like knew. Blizzard Communities? Yeah. Well, yes, kids. It works by the same kind of logic. as They've basically just copied Blizzard Communities. Discord, Discord. they came along, they saw Blizzard Communities and they went, wow, we could, wow, let's try and get in on that pie. And they just copied, they just copied Blizzard Communities, didn't they? That's what yeah, they, they did. did. But anyway, you're in <laughs> yeah, I love it. Just been on a, a real kind of like collecting stuff. I kick. have. Well, it's usually at this phase in like an expansion when there's just a little bit of a lull and I'm like, what do I want to do now? Do I want to play the whole game all over again as an alt? No. Yeah. I want to waste my time for mounts. Yeah flying around all them. And it is a bit of a lull, and like, I, I don't mind a no. bit of a lull every now and then. I because... love it when I get into this phase. Yeah, exactly. I know you do. I know this is like actually your favourite phase, when yeah, no one's bothering you like... to go and raid or do Mythic Plaza <laughs> exactly. or anything. You're like, this is great. At last, no around people. Deep home. There's no Just people ruining out. my MMORPG. Yeah, <laughs> this great. is perfect. It's this great. is so great. So and I, I don't mind lull either, but you can see why like in Legion they took the 77 day thing mm -hmm. and really stuck with it yeah. like hardcore because you go over that 77 days and you do start to notice it don't you mm -hmm. like um, when we were putting together graphics for the, for the skit at the beginning mm -hmm. and I was like oh um, can you 
just grab some graphics so we can make a uh, an Anduin daddy uh. dating simulator. And you were like, what? And I had to kind of like explain it to you a little bit. And I like, oh. knew. And now Everton is addicted to dating simulators. That's not true. I'm doing my research. <laughs> I was just playing Doki Doki Literature Club, which is... I, it is if technically a dating simulator. If but this it's video not. is late, it's because like I stopped writing last night to just watch Avatar play Doki Doki um, uh, Literature Club because it's awesome. It's it's a really good it, game one. Are you coming back for eight point one? Nah, I only stream now. Oh yeah, I'm like professional. I'm like ooh, professional tally streamer. Us in the streamer. I streamed wow. twice last week. We should buy you a Twitch hoodie and some <laughs> oversized headphones. I'm though, not. Like. I'm, I'm not. Are you taking the piss out of streamers? I'm not. Is that what you is that what you want? Do you want Asmund Gold <laughs> I'm to not. pull up this video one day um, and be like? I'm not taking the piss out no. of streamers. Um, but I yeah well uh, it's good because I'm a professional streamer. I know um, now <laughs> because I streamed twice last week and and I think we clocked up a good four hours. Wow. Between those two streams. Wow. Four hours of streaming. You and it was good. good. Hey, it was good fun, man. It was really it was fun. It was good fun. Yeah. I tuned in. Yeah, and you, you, you came along as yeah. well. Yeah. I think we're probably going to try and do that on Mondays and Tuesdays now if we if we can. I think we should like, do it. Yeah, yeah. Those of you that cut the stream, what did you think? Don't. Let us know. Shh, no, don't. Definitely don't answer. <laughs> should I make another pie? Um. <laughs> Again, out of context, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Asmongold has paused the video. He's going, people call me a beta male because you made me a pie. Presumably, Isn't if, that the opposite? Well, exactly. Presumably, um, if you'd done all of the cleaning, I'd have been even more of a beta male. And if you'd made me a sandwich, I'd have been even more... Like, I don't uh, understand people's logic. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, you, I don't understand you, internet. Don't get you. And, Just don't get it. Uh, no, but I don't <laughs> mind. That is, it's that kind of mild confusion that makes life interesting. Exactly. <laughs> thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed this video, don't thank us. Thank our patrons who give their actual, real-life money to make these videos happen. If you didn't like it, downvote the shit out of it and remember my name oh didn't think of that one did i didn't mm. think of that one in advance did we mm. do you know what i don't think we've ever like shown it where i've just not had a name to think of before okay. so i think that'll do wow yeah <laughs> it'll be like a blooper that we kept in oh wow it's like you're getting really meta yeah i guess so we're breaking the fourth wall it's all that doki doki <laughs> literature club what, what did you just almost call it? I almost called it a massive cock club. <laughs> <laughs> For me, Taliesin. And me, Avatar. You're glad you stayed to the end, aren't you? Cheerio.